Intel has been struggling for quite a while. And now that both AMD and others have started to compete with them in both the server and desktop arena, the pressure is on for them to be more innovative. Only a few years ago, AMD was not even really that competitive with Intel on the CPU side of things. But with the release of their Ryzen CPUs in the last few years, this has shown that a company can literally come up with new technology that can compete on the same playing field in a very short time frame. Intel, on the other hand, has dominated every aspect of the market for decades. Owning the server and laptop market and making a killing in their desktop market as well. The thing is, the writing is on the wall and AMD is already starting to compete with Intel in the server and desktop arena. And even though at the moment Intel still owns the laptop market, it seems that things are happening that could threaten that market as well. We also see Intel now developing their own so-called dream team to help them ensure that they can continue their market dominance. And they hope with the release of their 10 nanometer CPUs and new graphic cards, they can continue to be the number one dog in the junkyard. ARM technology was developed by a company in the 80s called Acorn in the UK, and it was developed as a coprocessor to be used in the PVC microcomputers of that time. What they found out, however, was that they made a mistake when testing the chip and forgot to hook up the power connection. However, the chip still ran and it was discovered that the chip runs on very little power. They were very surprised to see that the chip only needed a tenth of a watt to run, which was just amazing. But the problem was that there was no applications to take advantage of this technology in 1984. However, when the Apple Newton was released a bit later, the chip made its first mark using ARM technology and an ARM CPU in a product. And having Apple as their first client solidified their presence in the market, opening the gates for their technology to bloom and letting companies know they were the go-to company for low-powered CPUs. In the 90s, things changed quite a bit for ARM technology, as their CPU was used to power the most popular Nokia phones during that era, establishing them firmly as a marketable product. In the PC industry, more always seems to be better, meaning that AMD, Intel, and Nvidia have always set their sights on more transistors means more power. Hence, just like the modern CPU market of today, more cores means, well, more power. ARM technology, however, focuses on getting the absolute most out of their technology, and they work on getting the better or similar performance, but using less transistors to get the job done. This equates into better efficiency in the design by having less switching activity in each clock cycle, which means, hey, less power is required as well. The ARM business model is also a lot different than other CPU manufacturers, as they do not make or fabricate any of their own CPUs. They just design the cores and then license out that technology to many different companies like Apple, Qualcomm, or even surprisingly enough, Nvidia. These companies then take their CPU core designs and add whatever technology around them for their particular need and then make their own versions of the ARM CPU for their products. Nvidia uses their Tegra chip in the Nvidia Shield and the Nintendo Switch also uses an ARM based CPU as do Apple's iPhone and iPads. And since so many millions of these products have been sold globally that have used an ARM SOC, there is really a good chance that you own one right now in your house. ARM also designs its own architecture, and the way its cores are designed and work is very different than, say, Intel or AMD. Intel and AMD both use CISC-based x86 architecture, where ARM uses a RISC-based architecture, and what this means in layman's terms is that games and software that you use on your PC, they do not work directly with the ARM architecture. And that means that the software has to be completely recompiled into its native ARM architecture or run through an emulator to be able to run on your Windows-based computer. 
Most of my audience probably scoffs at the idea of ARM CPUs being in their prized gaming machines or simple office systems, and they probably consider ARM tech to really only be good for portable tech like phones and tablets, but for your PC, they're probably like, yeah, right. After all, low power and battery use is one thing, but a PC that uses an uninterrupted power supply, that means there's plenty of power to go around. So who really needs an ARM-based CPU in their PC anyways? Well, you might be surprised to learn that there are three ginormous companies that want to change your mind and start implementing ARM technology to the desktop market. And these companies are doing everything they can to push ARM technology to your high performance PC. Qualcomm, Microsoft, and Apple all want ARM technology to be inside of your computer. So instead of saying Intel inside, it might just say Qualcomm, Microsoft, or Apple inside, which would be a big ouch to Intel. Oh no! Now what comes with doing business with these giant companies? Well, you get better software, more powerful CPUs, and more support for the application and desktop market. The big question, however, is why on earth would Apple and Microsoft, the two biggest software providers on the planet, want to embrace ARM technology when x86 CPUs are doing just fine and both AMD and Intel's latest CPUs are quite nice and work very well on the x88 platform? So why is ARM suddenly so appealing to them? There are several reasons why, but it's really all about profit when you break it all down. As both Apple and other companies on the PC side of things have just had some horrible experience with Intel CPUs and Microsoft Windows, especially with laptops from the Windows Vista to Windows 8 era, causing profit loss and embarrassment. All the bloatware and other software garbage that previously came on your laptop or device so that the manufacturers, distributors could make a few extra bucks to help lower the price could now be eliminated and now allow companies to omit all that crap software and still make and sell a product that makes a decent profit margin. But they want to achieve this goal without really sacrificing any performance. These issues cause many users to make the switch to Mac products after having multiple issues including reformatting and removing unwanted spyware from their computers, like Lenovo's Superfish, who needed to find a way to make profits in any way they could. You have probably heard it many times from the old and young alike that they do not care about spending a little bit more money on a system that just works and offers a much less painful user experience all around. Let's just face it, a lot of people feel that Apple computers are just easier to use. Microsoft has been fighting this problem for years now, trying to get less unwanted software in their products and bringing the overall cost down to attract buyers. By using ARM technology, the cost on manufacturing products can be decreased enough to never have to include a bunch of unwanted bloatware or spyware even on entry-level systems ever again. This will allow the users to have a better user experience closer to the Apple side of things for ease and use and, let's face it, stability. For years after being beaten by Apple and being frustrated with the stagnated PC industry, Microsoft developed the Surface line to grab back some of the market share lost to Apple over the last decade. Microsoft had a plan for OEMs to develop their own products around this technology, but the laptops and tablets sold very well and became a huge success and now many professionals from all walks of business have begun to use Surface devices. As the market grows in both the laptop and tablet market, Microsoft has to be competitive with Apple in order to survive. And as more and more businesses use these products in their daily work, they need to continue innovation and making the user experience as easy as possible. This has become impossible, however, with working with Intel or AMD. Intel's lack of innovation and AMD's inability to provide chips in high volume has forced Microsoft to change how they develop new products. And with Apple being very innovative with many of their products, Microsoft needs to make changes to keep up society's demand for better products. Microsoft truly dropped the ball in the mobile market, and this is becoming more apparent all the time. And with the huge success of Apple's iPhone and iPad, Microsoft got a solid wake-up call to how badly they positioned themselves in this market. Let's just face it, they failed. 
ARM was a major factor in Apple's success, and as new form factors are being introduced, Microsoft must make sure they stay on the forefront of technology as to not get left behind again like they did previously in the mobile market. From foldable phones that will bridge the gap between a phone and a tablet, and like I said before, how long before we see a phone or a tablet that can become a full-blown PC or a screen that can be stretched to be used with your phone, tablet, or PC? The possibilities are just endless. And ARM technology will be the key to these new products and allow new innovation into the market. Intel themselves have been trying to make their own low-power ARM-style CPU for years with little success, leaving the door wide open for ARM technologies to gain market share and be implemented into new products. Things like AVX, DMA, and MicroOps all run better on risk-based architecture over a KISS-based one due to their ability to run better for parallel computing, which is the future. And Intel has been using these technologies to make their KISS type architecture work more like risk-based tech so that it can perform better, and this is obviously the way the industry is headed. Adding more instructions and bloats to the x86 system was fine when we were getting amazing performance jumps every few years, but that is just not happening anymore. And with parallel computer working better on risk-based architecture, things have to change. As the code gets more and more bloated transistor switching, this means there are power higher requirements as well. Intel's Y series of CPUs will continue to have lower cores and require less power, while ARM CPUs use a simpler code that requires less transistor switching and less power so that they can develop 8 or 16 core CPUs without the need for huge amounts of power or memory bandwidth, making it a very appealing technology for the future. This explains why Microsoft wants to make the move to ARM-based systems when it comes to innovation, but they still have to consider overall hardware performance. If you take a look at the very modest Snapdragon 835 CPUs running against an i5, 7Y54 CPU, and x86 emulation apps, the ARM-based CPUs fall significantly behind, and the i5 runs about 50% faster in multi-threaded applications and over 100% faster in single-threaded apps. But when running applications in the native ARM 32-bit code, the 835 actually runs faster in 32-bit and comes very close in 64-bit mode as well. And let's just face it, when it comes to battery life, there is no contest at all, with the 835 having the ability to run for 16 hours compared to the i5's 10-hour battery life, which is almost double. These tests were all run on identically based HP NVX2 systems, and the 835 system comes to market at $100 less, making it a more attractive buy to many users on a budget. So you get a system that may not be as powerful in some instances, but in others it works better, and the battery life difference is major, so it's something to definitely consider. These CPUs come from an ARM SoC that was a bit old and was modified from phone technology to work on a PC. But now Qualcomm is releasing the Snapdragon 8CX, a 7mm 8-core chip designed solely for the laptop market. Both AMD and Intel have new lower power CPUs, but how will they compare to the 8CX is yet to be seen. On the Intel side of things, we see the i7-865U with a boost clock of 4.6 GHz, 4 cores, 8 threads, and requires 15 watts of power. And on the AMD side of things, we see the new Ryzen 3700U, 4 cores, 8 threads, and requires also 15 watts of power and it also contains a much powerful Vega graphics processor. On the other hand, however, we have the new Qualcomm SD8CX coming to market with lower standard clock speeds and unknown boost clocks. It contains eight cores and requires only seven watts of power. So on paper, the 8CX looks very promising. The 8CX also contains an Adreno 680 GPU as well. It does seem though that AMD will most likely have the most robust onboard graphics chip. The current ARM products that already use the Qualcomm 830 and 850 CPUs, they can run many of today's hottest game titles like Fortnite, PUBG, and Grand Theft Auto 5, etc. And it can run them at 1080p as well. 
And what's really interesting is the 8CX is supposed to be at least three times faster than the previous generation ARM-based CPUs and a whopping 60% more efficient than the 850. You can see Qualcomm is really upping their game in a short time on the PC platform. The 8CX will also support Vulkan and DX12, so on paper the specs look very competitive against both Intel and AMD. And if things move the way they want, they will also be able to compete head-to-head -head with other SOCs and put a dent in their sales. All of these things will be a very appealing factor to all the major players like Dell, HP, and others who can now make a profit and still pass on that savings to the consumer as well as advertising similar performance in native programs and with improved battery life, which I feel is a really important factor to many end users. Qualcomm is also working hand-in-hand -hand with Microsoft to run their enterprise software and are working to further support ARM technology, and this could have a major impact on the market at large. Microsoft Surface Line now has some ARM-based products, but Surface Line products will eventually be all based on ARM technology. But for now, we still see Intel and ARM versions of the Surface products. Another sector of business that will also get the attention of ARM will be the embedded desktop market, like the small Atom-based machines that Intel currently sells that have been designed for simple office work. You know, these are those small little PCs you see in banks, offices, and other areas of business. And this market is a very huge cash cow for Intel. And currently, no one is really threatening that market. But Qualcomm, those boys want a piece of the action, and that will take a lot of Intel's profit away. Another factor is many businesses work hand-in-hand -hand with Microsoft and having an option to sell a system through their OEMs and manufacturing partners that would not only be cheaper but possibly just as powerful, that is a very appealing factor. With Microsoft pushing for all Windows-based products to run on ARM technology, that alone should be a huge red flag to Intel especially. The server market, once dominated by Intel alone, will also see more competition as ARM-based servers are also becoming more and more relevant, and this trend will most likely have a snowball effect and continue to grow segment by segment. Amazon, notably one of the biggest companies on the globe, just announced new ARM-based servers and it seems that many of your well-known manufacturers will soon have ARM-based products for almost every platform. There are many Intel-based servers currently running well everywhere, but ARM servers cost up to two-thirds less upfront than Xeon-based servers, and since they use less power, the savings in the long run in electric bills is even more, making them very attractive to the eye of many new businesses that want to save money not only upfront, but in the long run as well. AMD has also entered the server arena and is already giving Intel a bit of competition with their Epic line, but ARM-based servers could be bad for both companies if you look at the cost benefits alone. ARM servers, even in the current state, are very effective cost-saving solutions, and as more companies adopt ARM-based tech products, both AMD and Intel will now have to change their focus to compete with this old but now more relevant ARM-based technology. Giant data servers that rely heavily on saving power will also turn their attention to servers that save them money in overhead cost. And since Intel currently dominates this aspect of the market, they will be the one who suffer the most by this transition. And look out Intel, seven nanometer ARM chips are coming. And when they become available with their higher clock speeds and better performance, we will see ARM technology being introduced on probably every aspect of the market. Since ARM technology rules the mobile and phone market, and now Microsoft and ARM have teamed up to take on the portable market as well, Intel and AMD, who are both in this market competitively, will now have another form of competition coming from supergiant Microsoft, who have the funds to invest to make affordable and more user-friendly products available to the public. This, however, is not the worst news to Intel as Apple has now announced they are seeking an ARM-based solution for all of their Mac product lineups, including your iMac as well as other Mac desktop products. This would mean no longer using and buying Intel chips, a serious ouch to Intel's business model. The new iPad Pro from Apple that runs on ARM technology is surprisingly a very competitive and user-friendly device. The writing is on the wall. 
ARM tech is coming of age and may soon be a huge threat to Intel's business plans. But Intel is not dead yet, as x86 programs still run better on Intel-based chips, and until more companies embrace native ARM code, they will still have the chance to make a comeback. The terrible integration of Intel's latest chips into the new MacBook Pro showed serious integration issues, being so hot they could not even run properly. And that just makes a cooler, more efficient CPU a clear roadmap choice for Apple. ARM is nailing the coffin on Intel on many aspects of the industry, and even Intel's 10mm processors may not save them from ARM-based systems. But this industry, it's a tricky beast, and Intel may yet pull a rabbit from their hat and avoid putting more nails in their own coffin. The bottom line is ARM CPU architecture has already started to become more robust, and we know its power efficiency is better by a large margin. So its popularity and support will only grow as it gets better. Will ARM architecture actually knock Intel off their perch? Well, it seems the future may hold some hard times for Big Blue, and Intel better make some changes fast or the hurting will be on. Thanks for watching today's video. We appreciate you as our audience. Like usual, we will have links down below. And if you like what you see, hey, hit that sub button and turn on the bell for notifications so you can see more action and more videos here on Tech of Tomorrow.